Hey, 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 it's Jody here and I'm coming to you on this beautiful autumn afternoon and I thought that I would actually show you the magnificent tree behind me and the amazing sun just pouring in, which probably means that um, you may not, um, this may actually cloud me out a little bit, but anyway, <laughs> so be it. So I wanted to jump on today and just talk about yin yoga and why it's in my morning practice, why people tend to run away from it and what you actually gain when you stick with yin. So all I am using for this practice is this bolster and my yoga mat. So if you would like to join me, we're just going to do three poses, two minutes on each side. And I'm going to just run through those three little points that I have above, just to explain the benefits of yin. So if you want to grab, you can use a cushion, um, a pillow, anything really. This is a Manduka bolster, which is one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, and the first yoga pose we're going to do is we're just going to sit down and we're going to bring our legs into butterfly. This is actually called Supta Bhadakanasana. Isn't that a fantastic name? Supta Bhadakanasana. Um, otherwise known as butterfly in the English translation. And then we just grab the bolster and we can pop it onto our chest and we're just looking to fold from directly from the hips. So we want to keep the spine nice and long. It doesn't really matter where you fall. And then just before you fall, have a little timer going because it's good to time these. So I'm going to just get that activated. And then as we breathe, we just gently fall into the pose. So we take big deep breaths and where we feel resistance, we just take that breath towards the resistance. I actually practice yin in the morning, which of course is the opposite of what most, um, of how it's traditionally taught. But why I like it in the morning is that I don't like to move my body too much, but I like to open it up before my meditation practice. And the reason that I like to open it up before my meditation practice is that I just find I get connected to source a little bit easier. I find that my breath and also what's coming in for me that day is actually way more connected. And I think in the morning that the body is actually quite, um, quite stiff, which is why I've never liked going to a strong yoga practice in the morning. It's like for me, I prefer to actually do asana practice, like the full yoga practice a little bit later in the day or even later in the morning. I just don't like it super, super first thing. So that is why I practice yin in the morning. So we just release, get a little bit deeper. And where we feel resistance, we just breathe into that spot. See, that's two minutes already. So the next pose that we're going to move into is half pigeon. So we just put our right leg like this, and then the left leg goes behind and just ensure that it actually is straight. So you can stay here if this is where you're at or else you could come down onto your forearms, which is probably where I'm going to stay. The full extension of this is to actually lie down. So the beautiful thing with the yin and with these bolsters is that you can actually lie long ways along your mat and lie fully down and it is so restorative, it's beautiful. That's how I do teach it in class. But for the purpose of this, 
The reason why people tend to run away from yin is that it opens us up. It breaks through where we hold pain in our body. So for instance, for women, we hold a lot of our pain in our hips. So like right at the moment in my right hip, that is absolutely killing me. And as I take the breath towards that, it's really, really challenging. So when I first started yin, I remember being in a class and we were uh, getting towards the end of the class because that's generally in you know, asana in your yoga class we generally do pigeon towards the end of the class and the, the woman who was leading the yoga teacher said i felt that we'd been in pigeon half pigeon forever anyway she she said another 10 breaths and i remember turning to my friend claire and just going oh she can get fucked like that is how painful my hip was and I laugh now because it's one of my favorite poses and it's one that when I'm stuck when I can't make a decision this is one of the poses that I go into to find a little bit of release uh, as we all know the tension that we hold within our body uh, keeps that resistance and keeps that tension in our body and what we want to do is really to get rid of that and to open that up and to seek new pathway ways of both breath and also um, blood into that area see two minutes nothing so then we just switch out the knees take it to the other side set the timer so what happens when you stick it in what happens when you stick it in is the subtle differences that you won't realize and that will be in your mental capacity to be able to rationalize things a little better and you won't notice that for some while but yin is very much a a mental sport as such it um is really challenging and it helps us to learn patience one of the other major benefits is that it doesn't matter what sport you do whether that's riding whether that's cycling whether that's basketball or football doesn't like any sport yin will actually improve your technique and will actually improve your edge and the reason for that is is that you're constantly like regenerating fresh blood and oxygen into those areas where you're going to hold tightness so that's why a lot of sports people are actually now taking on yin yoga as a practice and what's another benefit i think the other benefit is actually accepting slowing down like quite often in our yoga practice we're just like yang 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 like really everything's like you know people go to hit classes people go to cycling classes people you know and it's great we i love all of that but yin actually brings us to a place where um we can breathe and just be at peace see two minutes nothing this is why i normally do five minutes each side on these so uh yeah yin will bring us to a place of peace and um and also test that that uh, patience muscle that we so often lose so i would highly encourage you not to go to one class but just to actually do a 10-week course do a 10-week course of yin and whatever sport you're doing and even for your kids get them into yin as well it's fantastic and see the difference in whatever other sporting activity that you do and then look at the difference in your mental capacity for how you're actually 
um, uh, addressing things and how you're actually less reactive because it definitely will change that. So thank you for joining me. If you're watching the replay, please replay or hashtag replay and um, I look forward to coming to you tomorrow. This is actually day 14 of my 30 day challenge and it's been phenomenal and I really, really appreciate you being here and and uh, listening to what I have to share. I hope if it's, it's of benefit and you have an amazing day going in yourself out like crazy. Okay, bye for now.